Okay, so in this video we're going to look at a system of equations, um, but this particular system is going to have a linear equation and a quadratic equation in it. Now remember that a system of equations is a system where there are two or more equations and you want to find out where the common solution is, and the common solution is where they intersect. Okay, And you can tell how many times or how many solutions or how many intersections are possible by the degree of the equations involved. Now remember, the degree is basically determined by the variable with the highest exponent. Now in this particular system, I've got a quadratic, which is this one right here, and its degree is 2. All quadratics have a degree of 2, okay? So there are probably two possible intersections or roots. And remember, a root is simply a solution. This equation is a linear equation, and its degree is 1, because the highest exponent on the variable is 1, and so there's only one possible solution, but you always default to the one with the larger number. So this particular uh, system has a possibility of having two roots or two intersections. It would make some sense, right? So if I had a quadratic parabola and I put a line through it, you can see that it might actually hit twice. Okay, so that's what we're going to try to do. Now, you can do this graphically pretty easily. It's very easy to see this visually, but we're going to solve this algebraically, okay? And we're going to use the uh, elimination method. elimination method. You could also use substitution, or like I said, you can use it graphically. So let's get started. Now, in the elimination method, remember, you need to line up your x's and your y's. All right, so let me just rewrite here, and I'm just going to, organization is incredibly important here, so please keep things organized and go ahead and keep them numbered. So here's my quadratic. I'll put that up on the top. y is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 1. And then here I'm going to put down the linear equation, y is equal to 3x. Now, I'm going to line up the 3x, the linear term, with the linear term in the quadratic. So I'm just going to move it over, and I'm going to put in 3x plus 1. Okay, so that, again, there's no square here no quadratic term in the linear equation. And then you just go ahead and eliminate one of the variables. In this case, I can eliminate by subtracting. So I'm going to subtract. Let me just write that in there. y minus y gives me 0, which is perfect, because remember, you always want to solve a quadratic equation by making it equal to 0. x squared minus nothing is just x squared. 4x minus 3x is just positive 1x. Don't need to put the 1. Now be, be careful here. A negative 1 minus 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is minus 2. Okay? And what we end up with is a new quadratic equation. Now, at this point, we want to find the solution for this quadratic equation. And again, you can do it a couple of different ways. You can actually factor, you can use the quadratic formula, which is what we're going to do here. All right. So I need to identify the a, the b, and the c. So my a is 1, because that's the number in front of the quadratic term. My b is also 1, because that's the number in front of the linear term, and my c is a negative 2. All right, so I have my a, my b, and my c. And I'm going to put this now into my quadratic formula, which is simply x is equal to a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 a. And now just go ahead and substitute. All right, let's just go ahead and do that. 
So x is going to be equal to a negative, my b value is 1, plus or minus, again my b value is 1, squared, minus 4 times a, which is also 1, and c, which is negative 2. Again, all over 2 times a, which is again 1. Let's go ahead and evaluate this. Let's go ahead and figure this part out, okay? So my next step, x is equal to a negative 1, plus or minus, let's be careful here now, 1 squared is 1, Minus a negative gives me a positive, so I know it's going to be plus. 4 times 1 times negative 2 is 8. Again, over 2. This is looking promising because I can see that's going to be a perfect square, 1 plus 8, right? So my next step, x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 9 over 2. Let's keep evaluating this, right? So this tells me now that this plus or minus tells me I have two possibilities. I can go with, actually let me just put it over here. Um, actually let me just put it down. Let me just go over like this. Okay. So let me just rewrite. X is equal to negative 1 plus or minus 3 over 2 because the square root of 9 is just 3. Okay, so this is what I have. Now again, the plus or minus tells me I have two possibilities. I have negative 1 plus 3 over 2, or I've got negative 1 minus 3 over 2. Again, this is what x could be equaling, right? Two possible solutions. Negative 1 plus 3 gives me 2. 2 over 2 is equal to 1. So there's one of my possibilities. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4 over 2. Negative 4 over 2 is a negative 2. So this basically tells me now that my x can be positive 1 or negative 2. Now what do I do with that information? Well that doesn't tell me where it quite crosses yet, it just tells me an x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two possible x's and then substitute them back into one of these two equations. Because remember, both of these equations, I can put it into either one because that's where the line will intersect one another. Alright, so let's just do that. 1 and negative 2. So, go back up to here. x is equal to 1 and x is equal to negative 2. Now, I'm going to choose one of these two equations. Let me just put them back here again. Uh, x squared plus 4x minus 1 or y is equal to 3x plus 1. Choose either one of those and then substitute. All right, let's try it. Let me take the easier one. Let me just put it into the linear equation. And I think this makes this probably like step, let me see, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'll make this step 11. So y is equal to 3 times, let's put this one in, 1 plus 1, right? I just substitute it into there. It gives me y is equal to 3 plus 1, or y is equal to 4. So one possible solution is, one possible intersection is where x is 1, y is 4. Okay? Let's do the same thing with our negative 2. y is equal to 3 times negative 2 plus 1. Gives me y is equal to negative 6 plus 1 which gives me y is equal to a negative 5, okay? Now this tells me that where x is negative 2, y is a negative 5. So what I'm figuring out from this again is that where I have this system, 
there's a possibility of this line crossing through this parabola, parabola twice, and these are the two points where I think they cross. Okay, now I'm going to bring up another screen here in just a second so we can see you can check on it graphically and see if it's true. Okay, so I just went into Desmos and I entered the two equations of my, of my system, y is equal to 3x plus 1 and y is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 1 to see if the two intersect, and they certainly do. And remember, oh, there's one of the intersections right there, and it looks like it's negative 2, negative 5, which is one of our choices. Here's the other intersection right there, which was 1, 4, again, which is one of our choices. So 1, 4 is one of the intersections, and it was negative 2, negative 5, negative 5 was the other intersection there. So again, just to go through the steps, remember to uh, line these up, okay, uh, so that the linear terms were in, in front of the linear terms. You can use graphics like here, or you can use the elimination or substitution method. We did substitution. Subtract it so that one of the uh, um, variables eliminate. In this case, it was the y. And we ended up with uh, 0 was equal to x squared um, what? plus x minus 2. Went ahead and found the solution for that new quadratic, found the roots. Once you found those x roots, substitute it back into one of these two and find the y roots. And that would be your answer. Okay? I hope this was all helpful for you.